And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Milja, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, the man who is the king of facts, the the man who is the last, sur the last surviving member of that which will not be named. The one and only Guru Larry. How are you doing today, man? Hello there. I'm doing <laughs> most excellent, thank you. It's a lovely temple this is, by the way. I, like, I love what you're doing with the lighting. You know, it's really atmospheric. I guess. Yeah, um, we, um... I try and, I try really, and keep at least 40 candles. Makes really actually. homely. Yeah, <laughs> makes it feel really yeah. homely. Yeah, everybody always asks, wait, wait, you're a monk. How can you be drinking? Um, <laughs> the trap is drink. <laughs> Besides, what the hell are you going to do in a monastery up in the mountains? <laughs> at least the, at least the, and I'm I'm not kidding about that. There are there are mon, there are mon, monastic temples in um in Belgium that brew their own beer, mm. and wine as well. Yep. I think they do their own wine. Uh, French, yeah. I think, vineyards. Um, and I don't know what I don't know what the de denomination of it is, but I know that there's a similar thing that goes on with certain um temples in Tibet, where they br they brew their own stuff and they sell it. Which is, well, that's probably how to keep the, uh, you know, keep the building yeah. going because you can't, you know, you can hide in a building all day long. You know, mm -hmm. you can't really pay for it upkeep. Yeah. So, I, w I often start with the with the um, humble beginnings and yeah. some something that something that I do I do find interesting is now in a lot of your videos you've t you've talked about. Um, like the the Commodore era, which is fascinating for me because that never because that never really made much of a footprint here in the states, which um, is weird because it's an American system as well. Yeah, it it is it is kind of it is kind of weird, but when I, um for me now I will admit a bit of bias on on my part because I'm from Minnesota and more specifically I'm from the middle of bumfuck nowhere Minnesota, <laughs> which. <laughs> So because, but even when it came, when it came to those early days, most of the most of the stuff I was seeing was the was the Apple II series. Yeah. Not re not really not not really um co not really Commodore not really Spec Spectrum and I didn't I didn't see an Amiga until I until I got out of high school. Hmm. Um. But what would what would you say what would you say was the um. Was the system that you ca that you first broke in on as far as your first introduction to gaming? Are you t are you talking about computers or consoles um, as well? Let's go with a little of column A and a little of column B. Uh, well, uh, consoles. It was the Atari Twenty Six Hundred mm -hmm. or the VCS as, as it was called over here because we never had the Fifty Two Hundred released here, so we went straight to the Seventy Eight Hundred. So yeah, mm -hmm. we had the Atari VCS. My mm -hmm. brother bought one with his sort of uh, first wages uh, for when he where he worked. Mm -hmm. I think he worked in Wal he worked in Walrus at the yeah. time, and uh, yeah, he bought one of them. And I sort of uh, sort of played with that for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was like early eighties, eighty two, eighty one, eighty two, yeah, mm -hmm. ish. Uh, the first computer I had was an Amstrad CPC. Mm -hmm. uh, my my other my other brother did. Um, he got a he got a Spectrum from his grandmother uh, mm -hmm. for Christmas one year, but he decided to sell it to buy army clothes because he's not obsessed with the army for a while. So mm -hmm. that was a well worth investment because he yeah. ended up working for the post office. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So that's, uh, that's how I started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a console as an Atari and computer yeah. was an Amstrad. So. Yeah. Um, for us, we're like, I, like I mentioned, I, I, um, I'd say I'd say I, I start I started when a friend when a friend of the family ended up gifting me an NES with a um, baker's dozen of g games and I already had a um, Apple II at the time. Oh, so I, so um, what sort of year was that? What um, year was that? I want to I want to say like night like um early nineties. Oh okay. Guess, was it was the Super Nintendo out by then? Um. Yeah. I think it. I think. I think it was, but I didn't. I didn't get a. Um, I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. I had a. Um, I had a Mega Drive. Okay. Um. Or Genesis here in the states. I have no. I yeah. still have no idea why they. Why they did the whole. 
different names thing? Uh, it's because uh, some company had the rights to the name Mega Drive in the US. And ah. also Sega wanted uh, something that was a new beginning because the Master System didn't do too well there. So no. Genesis as in a new beginning mm -hmm. and not the Phil Collins band. <laughs> um, when it, but when it came to... Like when it came to when it came to the uh, SNES, um, that was always something that was in the that was the thing that I would that I would play at somebody else's house, not the thing that was mm. in my own house. Um, yes, but I I um I will cre I will credit the Apple II GS for showing me that you can make an educational game without it being shit. Oh yeah, Can you remember what game that was? Um. There's two. There's two that come to mind, and both of them were from the same company. Um, both were from MECC, which was this computer software um, group that came out oh, of the it's University Oregon. of Minnesota. Oregon, yeah, Oregon Trail, wasn't it? Maybe? Oregon Trail was, was one of them. The other one was Number Munchers, and there were a bunch of oh. different variants of both of them. Um, oh wow! Like Number Munchers, that was that was the that was the one I got exposed to first because. Well, it's a it's a grid like setup, and you're moving and you're moving around in a f flashcard version of Pac Man. So, obviously, as a obviously as a young kid, that was going to be the one that um I I grew attached to first. Hmm. A lot of a lot of people um a lot of people always talk about how educational games suck, and I I was like, you can make a good educational game. The problem is a lot of people who make quote unquote educational games forget the game part. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I remember back in the day, I wrote a I wrote a thing, and I, and I basically accused stuff like Math Blaster and the like of being glorified flashcards. Mm. Um, oh yeah. Didn't help that one of the early educational games I had to sit through was Mario Teaches Typing. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> was that wasn't that the first ever? No, no, it wasn't. It was it was it uh, was it the first ever game that had uh, Charles Marinet doing the voice mm, of Mario? No. There was okay. one a few years before. There was one that I found out that was a uh, was a few years before that. Um, that was that was a glorified point. That was a glorified um, point and click. And um, I didn't find out about it until year until years after the fact because, like like I said, the a lot of it, a lot of those point and click style educational games weren't games. Hmm. And that one Edutainment. Mm -hmm. As they like to coin it as now. Yeah. Um oh, Although maybe maybe you could maybe you could repackage some of some of those old ones and call them art games and you'd get and you get a bunch of people writing oh, um, yeah. writing um stink pieces about them. Yeah, call them independent independent games. Yeah. Sort of like Theorista or something like that, you know, just I'm, walking around do it. Sort I'm of non game. <laughs> I don't know about you on it, but um Art games are my punching bag. <laughs> oh. Um Okay, there's some there's some that I there's some that I enjoyed. Like I en I enjoyed um the Stanley Parable, which is a parody, yeah. so whether or not that counts, I'll leave that to you. But stuff like Dear Esther I did I just never cared for. No. Well you just you're just walking and listening to a story, really. I mean it's I suppose it's a game that you could play if you just want to turn your brain off really mm -hmm. and just, just wander around aimlessly. I mean, I know people that do that playing sandbox games and just wander around the town doing nothing. And yeah. when I think about a game that I want to turn my brain off for, I usually I usually think of some version of Tetris, mm. or God or God help me, Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been any good at that. I've never been any good at Minesweeper. I am. I, um... I, I, I sort of can't get my head around the rules properly, and, that, and I just get frustrated and just get angry. I. So. I eventually, I eventually figured it out, um, mm. but it, but it was, it was a case where I, as much as, as, as much as this term is overused these days, I had to get good. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was a Dark Souls of <laughs> Windows games. Uh, uh, no, if anything was the Dark Souls of, Win of Windows games, it was Free Cell. <laughs> <laughs> that I could never figure out. I still, I Absolutely. still don't know what the hell that's about. Well, I, I, I still can't get my head around Solitaire. I see people playing it and I'm wondering how, how you're supposed to play that. I, um, I was able to, I was able to figure out eventually through trial and error, but um, then I just stopped playing it because it's just not interesting. No. 
Especially Not when expected. there's a lot of um, traps. Mm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But uh, one of the, one of the things that's become a bit become a bit of a running gag in a, in a lot of your a lot of your videos is take is taking shots at um the eternally not the eternally nodding knob Peter Molyneux. Yeah. So one thing I was curious about was what was what was the moment where you where um where you realized that this guy is this guy is kind of a dickhead. <laughs> well, it's it's. I mean, he's not a horrible person. He just needs to learn to keep his mouth shut. That's what he needs because he keeps overpromising stuff and that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was back even back in sort of two thousand five, two thousand six, when mm -hmm. uh, Fable was announced. Mm -hmm. He promised all this stuff on it, and you know, he never did make do. I mean, even then, you just say, "Oh yeah, that's not going to happen." But yeah, he just kept promising in that. I think when the public turned against him, it was on that Godus thing because he was using their money this time instead mm -hmm. of. You know, using company's money because it's all right when it's somebody else's money, but when it's yours, that's when it gets personal. Um, go remind me what year? What year was um Godus? Because I'm trying to think if that was during uh, that early wave of people trying to um do video game kickstarters. Uh, it was. It's fairly earlier than that. I think it was about 2013, 14 ish. Yeah, that that would that would definitely fit because. It was it was around that time that you that there were a bunch of people um doing video game projects th with this new cr with this newfangled crowdfunding thing, but didn't quite mm. really grasp that it was a completely different um a completely different style of market. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was developed early access two thousand thirteen, mm -hmm. and it was released in August and November two thousand fourteen. Mm -hmm. And. I th and um now grant now granted I, I th even with even with that whole thing with go to see it's probably going to go down as the as the second or third most infamous example of of kickstarter fuckery cuz yeah i don't think i don't think anything is going to going to top um chris roberts <laughs> oh, no absolutely not no um we, i have a ru i have a running gag of th of things that have things that have released before star citizen or things yeah. that have happened before Star Citizen, um, <laughs> they're still getting money for it somehow. So. Yeah, um, I do. I did find it. I did find it funny when a when a bunch of fans of that Tom claimed that it was going to be coming out so soon and would be this um, killer of Eve Online. And well, obviously you know, that never some happened. Some people are delusional. Yeah, but you always get delusional fanboys. <laughs> um. I, well, you have you have those sort of delusional fanboys in, in any medium, and it's always just it's always all the more funny when reality sets in. Yes, yeah, sort of realize the truth. It's now, painful. I'm not I'm not going to fully defend I'm not going to fully defend Eve because it's at it's um it's had it's had its own problems of of late, especially since everybody hates link ships and that thing. Hmm. Lar largely because largely because of the fact that it completely screws over um engagements especially engagements yeah. in low security since you could have some since the range for i get the idea with link with link ships it's a way to provide support buffs for fleets but mm -hmm. because of the fact that they could that they could be docked anywhere in that system you could just have somebody in a link ship just sit just sitting tight way off in the distance and still be buffing everybody else Mm -hmm. Um, but I, when it came to when it came to when it came to something like Fable, um, it was interesting to see the trilogy kind kind of play out because it was almost like a denigration. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, is the first the the first one for all intents and purposes, even even with all the stuff that happened is going to go down as a classic. Yeah. The second one still good, but the cracks are starting to show. The third the third one I like half of it ish. Mm. It's one of the rare cases where you have a where you have a non-strategy game where you're actually ruling. Yeah. Yeah. But it w but it wasn't a um, but of course the big the big problem is all, is 
a lot of the a lot of the a lot a lot of the a lot of the things that make an RPG interesting were just excised. Yeah. And I thought that there was going to be a return to form when it, when um when there was that remake of the first game, but that had other problems. Mm. Namely, I couldn't get the thing to run. Oh. It's a shame. But I do one of the um one of the other things I do I do remember see, seeing that um that re that really caught my eye from from your work was covering the whole driver th three thing. Oh which, uh, yes. Um, how long how long did it how long did it take to get all the material for that for, t for investigating that particular affair? Well, luckily, um, uh, that Scottish guy managed to archive a lot of the events that happened at the time. So it's pretty much all down to him. Sort of him archiving it. Uh, forgotten what his name is, uh, but uh, yeah, he, he archived a lot of the events that happened at the time, and he, mm -hmm. he had put it on this like really really old website that's not been updated since like two thousand. So it looks like some sort of GeoCities thing now. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now um, yeah, that's what he done. So I got a lot of the information from there. Another thing is just sort of from memory. Mm -hmm. That's how a lot of work, a lot of the drama uh, related videos I do is based on things I remember. Yeah, because. Now I I remember messing around with the with the um with the first and second driver games which were per, which were pretty good, mm -hmm. um, and then then there was that attempt to try and bring it into the PS3 era that <laughs> completely blew up in their face, but well, uh, San Francisco. Um, I think it was just I think it was just called Driver the Wheel Man, and it was trying to play like you were watching like you were watching a Michael Bay movie. Oh, okay. It um it was a it was an early it was an early PS3 exclusive and You know you not you're not talking about the Vin Diesel game, are you? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. No, that's, oh, that's nothing to do with Driver. That was <laughs> TH uh that was it Warner Brothers or TH uh well it was what uh, one pub oh, no it's Midway. Midway um Basically, they wanted to make their own movie franchise uh, with Vin Diesel and that, and this is uh, going to be their sort of entry point. They're going to do the game and then they'll make a movie based on the game and have their own franchise. But it completely died on its ass. Also, because the game was kind of, was well, shit. Well, the game, the game was done on a budget, really, so it wasn't very, so it wasn't you know wasn't too great. But yeah, they were banking on it being an actual movie franchise. Which um, I'd say that's a case of punching above weight. If you're gonna be, if you want to try and make a, you want to try and make a budget title as your backdoor pilot for a movie franchise, mm -hmm. that's um, that's a, that. I mean, if you if you really want to do that, then you should probably you should probably start spending some money. But then again, it's THQ, and they weren't exactly known for having an abundance of intelligence. Oh no, no Midway. That was Midway. Oh, Midway. 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 Well, Midway wasn't yeah. exactly wasn't exactly brain of the week either. <laughs> no. No, no. I the, think they're getting desperate. I mean, they had, more, they had Mortal Kombat, and they sort of lummox that for a while. They didn't really bother with that too much, which um, was their biggest cash cow. Yeah, they had they foolish. they had Midway. Midway did well for themselves as an as an arcade company, like a lot of like a lot of companies that around that time. Because um, of mm -hmm. course they had Mortal Kombat, and they had um, NBA Jam as the as their two go as their two go tos for the longest time, mm -hmm. but. I think I think that once the once the emphasis had to go towards um, consoles, they couldn't quite adapt. As well, as they were well. they're trying to use their they're trying to use their IPs, but add a sort of story narrative to them when they're dis solely designed to be like quarter munchers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, they did struggle in that respect, and they were hard to try and come up with their own franchise. I mean, they've done some really really, really good franchises like The Suffering and. Um, uh, Psyops, which is a brilliant game, but they yep. couldn't make any sequels because they uh, somebody sued them for basically plagiarizing their book. And that. I think I think they had also I think they were also responsible for bringing the second. Sh unless I'm mistaken, they're also responsible for bringing the second Shadow Hearts game to the to um, the West. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Sha I remember that Shadow Hearts co that Shadow Hearts Covenant was. Was tangentially related with them, mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, third one from the New World was handled by Exceed, 
who yeah. kind who kind of came up Exceed kind of came out of the blue and I I couldn't help but wonder if there if there were some ex Midway people in there. You never know. Which I think it be, wouldn't be too hard to find out their stuff. I mean, look up LinkedIn or Moby Games. Yeah, It'd be quite easy. But when now when it when when it came when it came to when it came talk to me about the in, about the um, initial conceptualization of the Fact Hunt series because that's that's been that's been the go to for for you for quite a while now. It has, yes. Well, basically, i done a script for a Games Yanks Can't Wank episode. It was that Games You Never Knew had sequels, mm -hmm. but I couldn't release it as a Games Yanks Can't Wank episode, as most of the games were released in the US, so it wouldn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So I started, uh, so I wanted to find a new franchise, uh, not, not franchise, a new uh, sort of show idea. And uh, the original thing was it was going to be going on um, uh, Thingy's channel, um, Game Theory. Uh, Game Theory asked me to come up with a show for them to mm -hmm. put on their channel, and I created Fact Hunt for them. Uh, so I put to it. So I basically used the name for that, and uh, you know they said I'll put it on your channel first, and that, and I did, and it sort of really took off from there. Mm -hmm. And then they went quiet on me and didn't ask me back. Oh but yeah. Well, when it comes to when it comes to doing research for it, is a lot of it stuff you remembered, or were, were there a few instances where you had to do some hardcore digging in order uh, to get material for an episode? A combination of the both, really. I mean, I'll, I'll remember a lot of the stuff that happened, and then I go back and look on the internet to see, you know, if my memory serves, corrects mm -hmm. me, yeah, and stuff like that. So it goes like that. Uh, a couple of topics have been what other people have told me over the years. Yeah. Um, were there, were there, when you mentioned um, having to check to see if your memory was correct, were there any instances where Something you thought was the case um, didn't tur didn't turn out to be as you had remembered. Uh, possibly, but I can't really remember any uh, any specific mm -hmm. uh, things about that. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's basically some weren't as dramatic as I remember them being, and things like that. So they didn't really yeah. make an interesting topic. But uh, some like a huge rabbit hole of stuff that goes with them, and they get even worse and worse. <laughs> um. Uh, don't don't I know it? I've I've got a whole I've got a whole I've got a whole thing that I've been sit that I've been sitting on regarding regarding de regarding decipher's embezzlement that I'll that I'll hopefully get to one of these days. Just hmm. um, but when but when it came to when it came to were there any were there any ever instances of a, a topic that you had consi that you had considered doing for fact hunt that um. Upon doing further research, there just wasn't enough meat on the bones. Uh, well, when that happens, I basically put it on the back burner and wait until more information comes. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, you know, some scripts are sat on for ten years until something more relevant comes along to add to it. Yeah. So I got things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no. Basically, if anything happens like that, I just wait for it to happen, and if it, if the worst comes to the worst, I try and sort of merge it into another topic, mm -hmm. see if there's anything relevant. Um, has there been, has there been, has there been any notable instance where, um, where you had put out an episode and then, and then some revelation comes in after the fact? Oh, that happens all the bloody time. <laughs> like I, I mentioned, even recently, I, uh, I did a video about Watch Dogs 2 mm -hmm. and I said there's probably not going to be a Watch Dog 3 anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah, then they bring out bloody Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. Although and they also um, said that Nintendo are never going to release Star Fox Two, and then they bloody did. Uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just stupid stuff. Like basically, if I predict anything, it, the opposite happens. So I just mm -hmm. do that now, basically. Uh, basically, Half Life Three is never going to happen. So hopefully, saying that is um, it's going to come out next week. <laughs> so, I so I refer you to that. I refer you to Einstein's definition of insanity. Ah, oh, uh, this. <laughs> Saying the same thing over and over again is a definition of madness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, doing the same. Oh, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same results. Different results. Yeah. Um. Which I, I suppose, which I suppose would be apropos. Which it's a it's a bit it's a bit ironic that that so many people are familiar with that are familiar with that phrase from when Voss quoted it in um in Far Cry. Oh yeah. Because that's basically been the Far Cry series ever since. 
Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Well, nobody, I think it's because I think they sort of missed, uh, nobody got uh, what Far Cry 2 was supposed to be. I mean, that was supposed to be the one realistic, like guns jamming and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Uh, so people didn't like that. So they went for a more arcadey approach of 3. But basically, Far Cry 3 is uh, uh, that Far Cry Predator game they released on consoles, really. Yeah. Really, except it's less linear. Mm -hmm. but so yeah, so I the the pro the problem is that Va Voss and company ended up being ended up being such endearing ended up being such endearing villains that yeah they basically um, stuck to that formula and never stopped and and as the years have gone by, it's gotten even worse to the point where they end up yeah. replicating that onto all yeah, their games and then acting surprised when people experience burnout. Oh yeah. Well, they have got Gus Fring as a villain villain for the Far Cry Six coming, haven't they? Yeah, I think the Far Cry Five villain wasn't that great, and we're just doing a bloody Jesus knockoff was a bit cliched in that. Everybody, because uh, I think I think the other the previous ones are uh, is it uh, Pagan Min and uh, Vass? I mean, they were sort of love glass holes that you could actually so you could you could relate to them, be friends with them. You could imagine really because yeah. they're such dicks. And uh, that, so you could get on with them, but yeah, the other one was a bit too sort of out of there, and sort of no sort of character. I will, I will admit, I have a, I have a small soft spot for for five, um, simply because, um, of where it takes place. You know, I, I, I did. Um, I, oh yeah, it's out of the sticks. I did prefer New Dawn, to be honest, uh, which used the exact same map. Yeah. So that was sort of a post-apocalyptic version, which basically means they painted everything pink for some reason. Um, um, I don't know. Would you would you rather have a post apocalyptic with too much pink or too much brown? Ah, uh -huh. depends where the brown comes from, really. But... Hey, phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when it when when it came to when it came to I, I remember one I remember one of the more amusing ones was the, was the whole thing of developers being assholes, and was that. Were were there were there some stories in in that that um would probably be a, would probably be a little less YouTube friendly? Uh, it's not per se. Mm -hmm. I think I've done all right there. I got away with it somewhat. Yeah. Um. When I think the one of one, but I'd say one of the topics that I I I definitely find fascinating. We and we talked about this before we went before we went um went live was um. Some of the stuff regarding like the like the Commodore and a few other and and similar consoles because, I've, while the while the Commodore was a, was around in the U.S., it never really established a foothold. I think it's because they aimed it more as a sort of a business computer rather than gaming. If they focused on it being gaming, I think that would have been more successful. I can I can definitely see that because there what there was. Up up through up through the late nineties, there was that there there was a bit of a trend of tr of trying to make um let trying to, of some companies trying to make um all in all in one hardwares as yeah. opposed, as opposed to as opposed to dedicated systems. Mm -hmm. Um, if I had to guess, maybe maybe some of that was a was an aftershock of the of the um eighty three crash. Mm -hmm. Since one, of yeah, we one well, we never had that over here. So, well, uh, there's um, I've now a lot of people put the blame of of the crash on ET. That ET isn't fully responsible for that. It's only one third of the equation. No, it's more Pac Man. I heard. I um, think it's because ET was a more iconic, really. That he got all the blame, but yeah, Pac Man was more to blame for being terrible. Yeah, it it was mostly because they try um. Now it's been it's been a while since I checked the story, but from what I recall, um, both both Mattel and Atari were courting were courting um, really hard to try and get the exclusivity to have a to have a Pac Man game on their respective systems. Um, Atari, of course, with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and um, Mattel with the Intellivision, and. Atari ended up when Atari ended up getting to getting to it first, and mm -hmm. the and what they ended up getting was not was not Pac Man, and 
they kept, they prob it was probably they probably set themselves up to fail because arcade machines were still more powerful than ho than home consoles were going to be. Yeah. Um, but the but the other two fa the other two factors were one, um, PCs were seen were seen as a more viable thing since you could have multi purpose affairs, and mm. two, there was too much shit on the twenty six hundred. Oh yeah, well like, everyone and their mother was developing games for it, so it has mm -hmm. a, so a tsunami of just crap coming out yeah. for it. You're you're probably familiar with Sturgeon's Law, right? Uh, well. I Explain it anyway. Just... Um, ninety percent of everything is crap. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the full version is anything can be art, but ninety percent of art is crap. Um, yeah. The we can, and while there's while there's no shortage of classics on the Atari, for every one of those classics, there's like thirty um, shovelwares, and yeah, and then if you and then. And then, if you want to really go to the bottom of the barrel, there's of course infamous stuff like Custer's Revenge. <laughs> yeah, Be beat him and eat him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the but the but those those were the uh, major factors, and it is a bit it is a bit interesting that that um that particular crash was re was relegated to the states because you you had offhandedly said that it didn't really happen in the UK. No, no. Well, we had we had the spectrum here, and that really sort of saved the industry. That's what yeah. people were buying. Cause it yeah, was cheap. I'd, I'd um, that's what that's what makes that particular um shift so so fascinating. Because, like I said, those sort of those sort those sort of PC console hi hybrid things um didn't re even when it didn't really um catch on. I think part of the reason is. Um, when ten when Nintendo basically redeemed the um in the U.S. end of the industry, um that ended up being the standard bearer of dedicated mm. consoles. Yeah. And I also I also I also think that I can't but I can't but wonder if one if one of the other one of the other factors in the U.K. and Europe was the um was the rise of um, PC Engine. Well, it was never released over here, PC yeah. Engine. It, it's, I mean, I mainly say, I mainly say that sim simply because of the of the fact that that sort of multi-purpose approach seems to be the thing that kept that kept the industry al industry alive in that region. Yeah. Um. And if, which is which is why which is why I find it funny when um. In the '90s, Philips thought Philips thought that they could do, thought that they could do the whole hybrid thing. Or in the 2000s, when Nokia thought that they could do a handheld handheld gaming thing for people too embarrassed to be having a handheld in public. Yeah. I <laughs> I e, e. the t the only th the only thing I will ever remember when it comes to the end gauge is that is that they thought they had a killer app by having the by having a video game adaptation of Rifts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I get a. Well, it's funny to me coming coming from a tabletop background because Rift has been my punching bag for twenty years. Ah, I love this. I love the setting. It's it's Gonzo as fuck, but trying to run the thing is pain. Mm, I can imagine. <laughs> um, largely because the table of contents is full of lies and the books don't have an index. Hmm. It's also been using the exact same rule since it's eighty nine. Hmm. When mo when most games will at least try and do a soft reset every few years because because things get too bloated. Yeah, but Rifts has insisted on using the exact same setup, even though everybody has said you guys need to do some sort of soft reset. That's so, yeah. that's why that's why um, additions are a thing. Yeah. Um, and of course, although it's although to although to be fair, it's not like um it's not like other RPG adaptations um have their have their have, have had bet have had better luck. A lot of the a lot of times when a role playing game tries to go video game, it tends to not be very good. No, no. Well, I, th I think the people need to learn. There's sort of adaptations. They need to sort of 
it's more of a, a feeling rather than an exact mm-hmm. conversion. And whenever I bring, whenever I say that kind of thing, people always scream Baldur's Gate or Planescape, and I and I go, those are the exception, not the rule. Mm. Well, we had video game adaptations of things like Hero Quest over here. So. Yeah, and um, well, I had I had to I had to cover a version of Hero Quest not too long ago, and trying to trying trying to summarize Hero trying to summarize um Hero Quest as far as the Glorantha version because um whenever because the thing is there's two there Hero Quest comes in two flavors there's the board game that was the collaboration between Games Workshop and Milton Bradley yeah. And that, and then there's the um, then there's the Hero Quest from um, Ka- from Chaosium, and a, and jumped between a bunch of other companies over over the years, that mm-hmm. w- that was using the uh, Glorantha setting. Yeah, which is which is why the, which is why it's only been recently that Hero Quest has even made any sort of attempt to come back because of that legal gray area. Hmm. Plus, there's plus there's the fact that you've got. To, you've got two. Ex, you've got an excessively greedy hand in the pot with Games Workshop being, well, Games Workshop. Hmm. Um, they tend they tend to be greedy motherfuckers. <laughs> and for, for to put things in perspective, Games Workshop owns the Warhammer IP. Yeah. That's why they've never re-released uh, Space Crusade as well. Um. There's, uh, under Hasbro, I don't know. Yeah, there, there's that, and if I recall correctly, Space Crusade was bit was basically um, a re, a reskin of Space Hulk, which they do, mm. which they do own. Hmm. Um, it's been a while since since Space Crusade, but it was the the other the other tricky thing with with something like that is it was in those early days of Warhammer and 40k where they didn't take themselves all that serious. Mm. Um, a lot of a lot of the stuff from from say first and second edition, um, forty k, and all the way up to I'd say third edition Warhammer Fantasy was a yeah. giant parody of other people's work. Yeah. It what it wasn't. I'd say it. I'd say it didn't really. Co- I'd say Warhammer Fantasy didn't really come into its own. As its as its own thing, until fifth edition, which was um er, which was early nineties. Yeah. But when it came to, when it came to when it came when it came to to um to get to doing research um how were have you had have you had to. Is a lot of it just going through articles, or have the, have you had instances where you've had to get in talks with um, de- developers or pu- or publishers or people on the other side of the glass? Uh, well, luckily, most of them will approach me mm-hmm. to ask uh, questions, you know, give me advice and that. So, mm-hmm. oh, it's a piece of information from yeah. the past and that you might be interested in. And so, I get mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I've been pretty lucky that most of the information I've got is out there on the internet or in magazines. Mm-hmm. So, that's my thing yeah yeah and um when it came when it came to when it came to digging up old stuff for magazines was were were there any instances where you had to deal with a um, paywall uh, a couple of times uh that uh, that what's the magazine that gamestop produce uh some of the issues of that i've not been able to get hold of because um, they want to pay for it well i'm not i'm not sure if it's known by the same name in the uk well, we but, don't but, we don't have game over anymore so um ga- Sorry, yeah. oh but the one that GameStop produced i believe that was ga- that was game informer over here yeah that's it yeah uh they put a load of issues online but they want you to pay for them so you can't sort of get a pdf and that and i've looked everywhere and end up getting the fan to uh scan his episode his issue in for me mm-hmm. um and w- which in some in some case in some cases, I can I can understand, but there there are times where I wish that there was a kind of unified archive uh, after a certain cutoff time. Like if an article is say X amount of years old, you put it gets put in this sort of in that sort of archive. Oh, public domain, you mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, uh, archive.org are pretty good for stuff like that. Yeah. 
so that's what most of the places to get decent magazines from are. Yeah, I um, a while a while back I want a while back I wanted to kind of get kind of get a feel for um why, even though it wasn't all that successful, a lot of game devs cited Anarchy Online as a big inspiration for them. Yeah, and unfortunately, most of the old articles I was able to find were on game were on um GameSpot. Oh yeah, which um, now they now it, cert it certainly gave me a good amount of perspective, but the only but the problem was I was only getting one perspective, and mm. I couldn't find any from from say GameSpy or IGN about about um about that particular topic. Mm. But when it um when it came to when it came to um get when it comes to get when it comes to getting footage for do, for doing episodes um have there been have there been some um games that have been that have been trickier to record or, or get footage for um i think uh i'm trying to think uh some of the sort of more obscure if there's something really specific uh, I need to mention show in a video, uh, mm -hmm. there's a video coming up I'm doing, and it's a lot of really obscure old PC game and that. Mm -hmm. and there's, uh, so I need to actually play the entire game to get to that one segment, which is only like five seconds long. So, so there's stuff like that. So, and also it's an old PC game. And old P old PC games can be can trying to play those on modern systems can be a, a case of. Um, the Wild West. Yeah. Um, I I remember I remember booting up um the original test drive and I had to go through a bunch of hoops so that I wasn't driving at warp speed. Yeah. Because um that and a bunch of other games had the had that habit of the speed is directly tied to the potential speed of your graphics card. Yeah. So obviously, doing that with even even a mid tier level graphics card is going to make you um, go fast enough to break the sound barrier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yeah, um, I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing with some of the ones that you in your case you've had to go through a bunch of hoops or or mess or mess with the inner workings to make sure that it's not doing something you don't want it to. Uh, well, I've been lucky so far. I must admit. I mean, I'll be you. I used um things like DOSBox and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, recording footage for the uh, Beverly Hills Cop game. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to do that for DOSBox and by some miracle decided to work one day for me. Was was it pretty temperamental up until that point? Uh, well, it was just trying to get it to boot up in general, really. Yeah. Um, DOSBox can certainly, do a, can certainly do a lot of things, but it definitely has its limits. And I'm just thinking... I'm just thankful that I don't have to, that if I feel like I'm um, playing old shooters, I don't have to really mess with that anymore. No, because um, well, if I feel if I feel like breaking out Doom was, I can ju I usually just use GZ Doom. Yeah. Um, and in the ca in the case of something like Blood, um, and Blood or f or a fresh supply ends up working a lot better. Yeah. But when um. When it out of out of curi out of curiosity, how long does when it comes to when it comes to doing a script is that something that usually takes about a week? Uh, it the well the, the research is where it, all the uh, time comes into that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've sat on some scripts for over ten years. Yeah. Uh, some but some of them just uh, fly out the door. I mean, I've managed to I've written scripts in like uh, less than a day yeah. that have uh, come up really well. So it's it's just basically. If there's enough, enough momentum to create a whole episode mm -hmm. on some topics, you, so really, you had mentioned a few of them were bit were based in um in um ideas that were that were suggested to you by your, by your viewers when you were when when Fact Hunt was starting to gain a fair amount of um momentum. Were there was there were there any um requests that you started seeing more consistently than others? Well, some of them like do it. Ask, ask me to do topics that other people already covered, so I don't see the point in that. So I always try and do stuff that nobody else has done, yeah. uh, as much as I can. Uh, but uh, not really specific. I've I've had a few people. Uh, some of the people I've got other people writing scripts for me now, and they've come up with concepts. The one I'm putting up at the moment 
about uh, games based on movie. No, uh, yeah, games based on movies, based on video games. That's my next video going up. Uh, and yeah, that was a suggestion one by a guy called uh, Dodgy Kebab. Mm -hmm. uh, he's yeah, he's going to be do he he wrote this script and that. So basically, yeah, yeah. it's basically a video game, uh, video game that movie that they've turned into a movie, and then the video game companies turned it back into a video game. Mm -hmm. So that was quite that wouldn't be my sort of topic thing, but it was quite interesting. So I covered it. There's there's an in, there's an inception moment if I've ever if I've ever heard. Yeah, one. absolutely. Um, now when when it comes to when it comes to you you mentioned two other writers. So when it comes to them, is it, is it a case where when when doing the scripting, you you guys um, bounce back and forth in, in terms of what would be a good line here or there? Uh, yeah. Some well, basically they'll they'll, they'll submit an I ideas to me, see what mm -hmm. uh, sounds interesting in that, and we sort of uh, agree on one. Yeah, uh, and then they write a script, and then I sometimes rephrase a couple of things uh, to make it easier for me to say, so I don't get tongue tied and things like that. Uh, I normally rewrite the intro because it's sort of a, a sort of thing how I mm -hmm. say it. I always get have to dig out the old thesaurus <laughs> to get some really lyrical things there going. Yeah, when it came to when it came to the lyrical thing, was that something that just kind of settled that kind of settled into and it just and it just stuck or was that something that you had planned early early on when you started doing that series it, it's sort of it's sort of stuck i mean nobody sort of uh caught on to it being a catchphrase mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh really it's always been a hello you thing yeah. uh but yeah no it's, it's something i like doing really it's quite yeah, it's quite clever i suppose mm -hmm. i do like digging out words that nobody's used for over 100 years yeah. just to because they sound the same well, begin with the same letter. At the at the very least, nobody's going to sue you for using the word edge. <laughs> no, not yet. Anyway, well, I don't think anymore because nope. Because ever since he got smacked around by EA, nobody's heard hide nor hair of um of Langdell. Well, he become a pre he left the he left gaming completely and become a priest. So <laughs> that's I so that's... I find. Isn't what isn't one of the commandments thou shalt not lie and he and yeah thou shalt not yeah thou shalt not steal yeah and thou shalt not play <laughs> me on the on the world's edge yeah yeah trying to claim trying to claim a word that's been around since the 14th century yeah uh, um that was I think that was one of the only only times in history where electronic arts ended up being the good guys yeah. Yeah, I know. Somebody, somebody left a comment saying, I, "I feel really bad that I'm rooting for EA as the good guys in this story." <laughs> it, it, to be honest, to be honest, um, that sort of SmackDown was inevitable because he couldn't help he couldn't help himself when it came to picking fights. And well, no, wait, well, was just a bully. He's a tr uh, copyright troll, as they call him. Yeah. In fact, I think the judge outright said, outright called him that. Yeah. But. When, when it now, when it comes to you mentioned that there are a few scripts or the or the like that you sat on. When when it comes to a crit, a criteria for what would what would be um what would be a what would be a sat on and what would be one to sink your teeth into, are there are there a few things that you look for in terms of okay this might ha this might have this might have something to go on or this might not have enough. Uh well like I said I sit on I sit on stuff and there isn't enough to go there I always I try and go for something like really stupid events that's happened so for like funny anecdotal stories mm -hmm. I like them and also everybody loves drama really any negative drama stuff everybody yeah. eats that up oh. so blatant clickbaiting but you know <laughs> I, I get paid out of it so fuck them yeah so <laughs> um I'd say I'd say when it comes I'd say when it comes to that I think um I think Mel Brooks said it best. Tragedy is when I cut my finger. Comedy is when you fall into an open sewer hole and die. Yes. Exactly, yeah. I mean, hell, people still read the Darwin Awards. Oh, yeah. And I'm what I'm trying, what I'm, with that, with that kind of thing in, in mind was when you were, um, when, when you were kind of establishing the, um, F the framing for for the series were there were there any were there any sort of hard, hard and fast rules that you had that you had as far as 
what as far as how you'd um approach certain topics aside from the whole thing of of either dramas or um fu- or funny anecdote uh well basically stuff that nobody else has done is my only really rule really mm-hmm. i mean obviously there's always somebody somewhere who's mentioned it yeah. uh but so so it's not been 100 percent accurate but yeah i do try as far as i can not to i try and do original content mm-hmm. and then gets stolen by a million multiple millions subscribe channel <laughs> um yeah i remember well, it's fun it's funny you mentioned that given um given that whole um philip Mewson thing that ha- that happened last year <laughs> i tried to get him to voice one of my videos once but he ignored me <laughs> well you you sh- what you should have done what you should have done is put is is done is done the video Put a long blank spot so that when he, so that when he finds the video he can he can fill in that blank spot and that and then you get and then you catch him. Yeah, that'd be funny. Um, but now when it, now one of the things I had I had seen during during um during re, during research was the uh, collab stuff that you had done with um, Ashes. Um, yeah, especially the especially the board game stuff. Do you? Before that, did you did you have a lot of um, background when it came to board gaming? Not really. No, I mean just ones I picked up as a child. Really, I, I wasn't really into board gaming as much. Really, yeah. well, really, because I've mostly played on my own. So, mm-hmm. Which I can I can definitely get that. And unfor- unfortunately, with board gaming, you have to deal with other people. But yeah. Well, you you already know. Well, you you already know about you already know about Hero Quest, so that's our that's already a mark in your favor. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I just I bought it again recently, actually. Um, and it's and again it's fortuitous timing because um Hasbro is taking steps to try and bring it back. Yeah, including I, um, I pre-ordered one of them as well. And apparently, they want to make the, they want to make that the flagship for the new for the fact that they're bringing back the Avalon Hill name. Oh okay, because for a while Avalon Hill was under the umbrella of Wizards of the Coast, um, but a few months ago they separated that and made it and made Avalon Hill its own thing, and yeah. I think Hero Quest is meant to be the opening salvo for that. Um, oh. Up until then, the only thing that had the Avalon Hill label for the longest time was the juggernaut that is Axis and Allies. Hmm. I say juggernaut because it's got way too many fucking pieces. <laughs> yeah. Like I think it was like 257 piece, pieces for that thing. Oh wow. And I don't I would only yeah. I would only set that up at conventions because it took so long to to set up and get people actually playing. Yeah, it's, it's less it's less a board game more a Lego kit. Um Everybody says stepping on a Lego is the worst. It's not. Stepping on no. a D4 is worse. Oh dear. <laughs> Um, we call them call traps because uh-huh. you know, they're they're little tiny triangles. Ah. Uh-huh. Um. Well, when it co- when the other thing the other thing I'm cu- I'm curious about is, um, how long how long does it usually take you on the editing end of things, or do you have somebody helping you out on that? Uh, it depends on the video. I do get I'm getting other people to help me out, mm-hmm. but it normally takes me about two weeks from start to finish, mm-hmm. uh, to do a video. Yeah. Really. And were th- I realized that I realized that an artist is their own worst critic. But when it came to some of the early edi- editions of fa- of Fact Hunt, were there any that you looked back on and saw some missed opportunities? Not really. I think the timing was most of my biggest issue. Really, I wish I got to the point quicker with some of the earlier ones. Mm-hmm. Um, like what was it? Was it a case of just um just just meandering or meandering around? Yeah, or certain I, things? yeah, just talking a load of uh, non-relevant information. Really, I didn't really sort of yeah. I should, I should have just gone straight to it. But people, nobody's really complained about it. To be luckily, so which I could I could definitely I could definitely see that. And like like I said, an artist is their own worst critic. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm per- because ev- every I think everybody who's put out content in one form or another has that one video that they'd rather not look at or think about. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I think they also the artists in it. They they never finish a work; they only abandon it. Yeah. Um. Which 
when it comes to when it comes to that whole thing, I think that I think there's some truth and some falsity in that. Um, oh, okay. There is definitely some truth that some that somebody never finishes; they only aban they only abandon. But um, well, for well, it's not sometimes. Sometimes you do have a sit. You do have a situation where you look at a work and you and you just can't fig you just can't figure out what exactly could I even add to this. Yeah. Um. Uh, when, but um, when it came to some of some of your work as as an as an art as an artist, what what I'm curious about is how um how how did how did that how did that end up getting getting started? And what would what would you everybody has that um that set of um books or shows that ended up ended up serving as an inspiration? And I'm curious what some of yours were. Uh, I can't remember really. I think it was a lot of uh, Gak and Mooks and stuff like that uh, for artwork for my anime stuff. Basically, the um, AIC art books mm -hmm. uh, from the late night, uh, from the early mid nineties, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Really. Uh, also, how sort of learned how to draw in the uh, how to draw comics the Marvel way. I done. I got that book. Mm -hmm. That was really good. I mean, it's the old fashioned style of Marvel comics now, but it helped me build character designs. Uh, Build, uh, I was to build a character, mm -hmm. as it were. Which... I did get some of those House of Draw manga books, but they're only in Japanese at the time, so. <laughs> so I just went by the pictures, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, when it when it came to when it came when it came to the manga influence, um, were th was it mo was it mostly just um just just from art just from art books that you could that you couldn't read, or were th or were there any um any manga specifically that served as an influence? Not really. Maybe you're a say yet Sora, uh, but um, and uh, sort of the Tenchi Moyo comics and stuff like that. Maybe mm -hmm. them, but um, uh, nothing really. I think it was more more the style at the time. Sort of the '90s anime style was more my influence then. It's, I can I can definitely I can definitely see that, especially since um, the interesting thing about 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 um an, about anime and manga in the '90s is that. That that was when there was a bit a bit of a boom towards the towards the OVA thing, because of how much yeah. of a success Megazone Twenty Three was. Yeah, since up until that point, people were real were um kind of sketchy about this whole. Are we really going to make any money if we put something direct to video? Yeah. Then, and Megazone Twenty Three was, for all intents and purposes, a failed experiment because the. The third part of that of that project was so completely far removed because it was a, the plan was for that to be I think like a a um twelve or thirteen episode series yeah but they but um they had budget problems so they just put out what they had finished as a direct to video thing yeah and the the um. The one that I the one that I saw when I was doing research that you, that there was some involvement with with that's largely become forgotten even with, even with the amount of success that the company involved with has had was um, Oni. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Well, they, they've they've made references to it in Halo and stuff like that, but they've never sort of yeah. I think it's because uh, uh, Rockstar Games owns the rights to the game. That's why they've not really picked up on it now. Yeah, um, well, there was a there was a sequel in development, but it, they didn't have anything to do with it. Not yeah. did I. I I do remember I do remember hearing about that and um yeah, there's footage of it on YouTube, but it looks mm -hmm. quite a different game. I think they were mm -hmm. trying to abandon the anime look in the sequel as well. Which I'm not entirely sure if that would have been the best move to make. No, I wouldn't have. I don't think it would have picked up. I think that was one of the main uh, draws for the original was the style. I'd say I'd say a mix of both the style and the fact that it was it was very blatantly inspired by um, Shiro Masamune's work, especially especially um, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, I, uh, Apple Apple Seed mm -hmm. as well. I'd say I'd, I'd say it's probably sixty percent Apple Seed and forty percent Ghost in the Shell. <clears throat> um, so I, th I think a little bit of a Dominion Tank Police as well. Yeah, I I could I could definitely I could definitely see a. Not at, not as much as those other two, but definitely definitely some notation, and mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the last time that there would be that kind of um, influence because 
then so then several years later there would be Shogo um mobile armor division which um yeah it's it's unfor- the heart monolith's heart was in the right place with that <laughs> yeah the problem was lith tech sucked as an engine yeah, yeah. I re I really I really think that they should that they should have stuck with the build engine because they did magic with that with that thing. Mm. Um, I think even just a Quake Two engine would have been good for that back then. Yeah, the the like, and I don't th- I don't think the Quake Two engine was that was that hard to work around. But Lith Tech was a night was from what I had heard was a nightmare for Monolith. Mm. Did that, didn't they also use uh, make uh, no one list forever? With that engine, Lith Tech, or was that, that another? Yeah, that yeah, Monolith did do No One Lives Forever, which um was a was a much better thing. The other, mm-hmm. I'd say, the other problem was Monolith was trying to develop both. They were, they were trying to do Lith Tech, and um, No One Lives yeah. Forever is on a more stable version of Lith Tech, and they were trying to do two games with it at the same time: Blood Two, and Shogo. Yeah. Um, Shogo is somewhat tolerable, even even if the, even if it's um, gl- it's glitchy as all is glitchy as all hell, and and has some bu- has some moments of bullshit. Um, Blood yeah. Two is a mess, mm. and they had made the mis- they had made the mistake of a- of asking fans to suggest features, <laughs> and ended up getting way too many suggestions than they could actually put in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I can see that. Yeah, I think you're, you're trying to make everybody happy. You try, you try and make everybody happy, and all you're going to do is piss everybody off. Um, yeah. Well, is that you can't please all the people all the time? Mm-hmm. Type. And I think that's I think that's also the reason why um why Star why Star Citizen is going to go down in history as as one of those cases of trying to please everybody and failing horribly yeah um of of course the, of course the uh, the i'd say when it came to that the problem is that chris roberts is a is too much of a perfectionist for his own good yeah because it's not the first time that he that he's tried to promise the moon and couldn't deliver there was the whole thing with freelancer yeah which I remember, I remember liking it, but the problem, the problem is, it was going through delay hell until Microsoft stepped stepped in and said, "You are you are putting the game out at this time. Get at, get to it." Yeah. Um. And what, now, when it came when it came to when it came when it came to when it came to doing doing um so when it came to doing some of the research was the, was there. I mentioned now. I mentioned paywall. I meant I mentioned um, get getting in people getting in contact getting in contact with you with with certain stories. Um, was there was there ever a case where you where um where you thought you had you thought you had something juicy when it came when it came to future one, but it ended up being a dead end? Uh, a little bit. I mean, uh, there's sort of a lot of um sort of a you know rumors uh, mm-hmm. that happen and that, and they turn out to be not as juicy when you find out the truth. And stuff like that, so I've had to abandon them. Or sometimes the opposite happens with one that doesn't sound that good. Uh, suddenly it turns and it's really, really good that nobody's mm-hmm. ever picked up on. Um, but yeah, some yeah, some of them just like being a bit of a washout. Can Can you think of an example of each with, when it comes to that one where you thought where you thought there was something, but there what but there wasn't enough meat on there, and the opposite where something that didn't seem like much had a lot more going on. Uh. I'm trying to think of ones at the moment off the top of my head, but I can't think of any right now. Uh, 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 the the Drivergate one, I learned about the whole ordeal mm-hmm. uh, with them. Make it basically their staff made a, a song called um, "Infograms is Innovation," and yeah, it, it turned out to be an uh, absolute bomb. Uh, they spent about fifty thousand dollars just creating this song that nobody likes, nobody wanted, and ended up sack. They ended up being fired for it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that come out that got the end of it, and that was just a some that was done just me using it at the end of a song, at end of a video. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. I can't think of anything the other way around. 
uh, yeah, basically it's just stuff that stuff rumors on the internet turn out to be not true. Yeah, and when it can, I'm get, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that a lot of that a lot of um, the more rumor end of things are are. Um, I'm not going to say a large amount, but a not insignificant chunk of of some stories that get sent to you where it end, where it ends up being a I heard. Yeah, a lot of that is uh, a lot of that is a sort of a, you know chi- Chinese whispers, as they say. Um, but yeah, stuff things like. Yeah, stories like that happen a lot. So I have to sort of try and I always try and verify it as much as possible the stories. And typically when typically when you um when it comes to tr- when it comes to trying to verify is it when it comes to getting in contact with people is it a case of just email chain or have you had a um voice to voice conversation with with somebody when doing your bits of digging? Uh, very few. Mostly, it's over emails or PMs on Twitter or mm-hmm. uh, Facebook. Mostly, yeah. so yeah, it's very few times I've actually spoken to the developer. Uh, you know, vo- vocally. Yeah. And I'm, get, I'm that, guessing it's... that 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 or I that or I hear or somebody else is doing an interview with them, and I ask them, "Oh, can you ask them this and that?" All right, that 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 makes sense. Yeah. Oh. And I'm get I'm guessing a lot of it is because when you when you message them it's a case of hey hey could hey could you ver- could you verify this this or that? Yeah. I mean luckily most of them know who I am. So they've obviously had stuff shared from me in the past, so that opens the door a little bit, so that helps. Yeah. Um has there been has there ever been a case where somebody where somebody was open to respond but then there was some communication breakdown and you never heard from them? Uh, yes, there's a, a guy, basically, who, um, it's a big war between a guy, yeah, there's a game store called CEX over here, and there's a manager, uh, he was telling me some anecdote, uh, about how he got all their stores, uh, boarded up in the game, video game, uh, the getaway, and mm-hmm. so I was trying to do a story on that, and he started being, he started making weird demands and stuff like that, so... Like he wanted to be in the, he wanted to be the star of the video and stuff like that. And that's why I'm just, well, it doesn't work like that. My show and that, and then he stopped talking to me. So basically, I had to get the, the gist of the story from his friend in the end. Oh, was he was he open that by by that he that he was gonna he was going to be able to use that as some sort of hey hey well, look I'm, hey look I'm internet famous. <laughs> I, I I don't know what his intention was, but he did want to be in the video and that talking about it and stuff like that. And sort of having the video all about him, and I said it doesn't really, you know, it's not that's not how I do videos, it's... And stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. and then he went, but it was a pain in the ass to talk to anyway. So, so that... yeah, I could, I could see that. Well, plus there's the, I'd imagine that there's the advantage of because of the fact that you're do that you're doing it mostly mostly through um, messages in that form. Yeah, you don't have to deal with time bit. zones. <laughs> in some respect, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, if only if only I could be so, if only I could be so fortunate to not have to deal with ti- not to deal with time differences. No, no, yes. Oh, if only they could blame the sun for that. Um, it's one of those moments where I wish the flat earthers were right. Yeah, because <laughs> un- unfortunate, unfortunate. And when it, whenever I whenever I ask people, people say, "Well, why don't you just build a teleporter?" To which I say, <laughs> "Have you ever seen the fly?" Yeah, that's why I'm not touching a teleporter. <laughs> Funny, uh. but now with with that kind, with that kind of thing in mind, um, I re- I realize that th- I realize that th- that um everything's kind everything's kind of in flux, especially especially in the hell zone that is 2020. But what can you tell me about what you've got coming down the proverbial pipe? Uh, well, I've got a cup. I've I'm writing a script at the moment on uh, video game demos that accidentally contain the full game. <laughs> I'm doing that one on that, and I'm also doing one on uh, a bit worried about if it's going to pass YouTube's uh, demonetized mm-hmm. uh, status. It's uh, one about real life murder victims that are being discovered in video games. They've mm-hmm. accidentally used a picture of someone. Who's being murdered? Mm-hmm. 
so uh, stuff like that. So those are upcoming videos. They're coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, aside from that, um, it's uh, basically uh, at a whim, really, what I come up with. Sometimes I, 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 go, I dig through some of the uh, sort of ideas I've had to try and come up with something. And it uh, takes my fancy and that I sort of uh, build on that. Yeah, I, I can definitely get that. Um... Yes. So sometimes I just turn it. Just, you know, I, go, uh, I, don't, I can't be bothered with this one, so I just go on to something else. Well, your your plans can't go awry if you don't have if you don't have any. Absolutely. But with with that with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way up to the temple. Oh, thank you, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I oh, often say around here. Much. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!